In 1990, the Energy and Commerce Committee, under Chairman Dingell's leadership, pioneered the cap-and-trade concept as a regulatory means of achieving air quality control. We applied in 1990 cap-and-trade for the first time to the control of sulfur dioxide emissions from stationary sources, and that was done with highly positive results. Based largely on that successful experience, the Environmental Protection Agency and the states have established other cap-and-trade programs for fine particulate matter, for mercury emissions, and for emissions leading to ground-level ozone formation. Today, the subcommittee will begin its consideration of whether cap-and-trade should be chosen as the preferred method for a nationwide, economy-wide program of greenhouse gas controls. It's noteworthy that in order to comply with the Kyoto Protocol, the European Union adopted cap and trade to control greenhouse gas emissions from a wide range of emission sources. We intend to gain the full benefit of the European experience with cap and trade in this context as we design a mandatory control program for the United States. In today's hearing and during an upcoming European visit, we will ask those who have had this firsthand experience to advise us on what the European Union did properly and uh, perhaps what could have been done better uh, were that uh, program to be designed from the outset today. We will ask similar questions about the experience to date of the voluntary greenhouse gas cap and trade program that is coordinated by the Chicago Climate Exchange, and we're pleased to have the Chief Executive Officer of that exchange with us this morning. We also note the decision of the Northeastern and Mid-Atlantic states comprising the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative to use cap and trade to reduce CO2 emissions from power plants, and the announcement by five Western states that uh, cap and trade will also be employed and a regional greenhouse gas control initiative on the Pacific Coast. I would stress that in this subcommittee, we have to date made no decisions about the method that we will adopt for a U.S. greenhouse gas control program, uh, but obviously cap and trade is a major candidate for consideration for that program. During today's hearing and through further inquiries, we will be examining closely cap and trade as a possible choice for the U.S. program. I want to welcome today's witnesses and thank them for preparing and submitting their testimony and being here in person in order to offer oral summaries and give us advice. Uh, and I, I would announce that pursuant to the rules of the committee, uh, any member uh, who chooses to waive an opening statement will have the time for opening statements added to that person's period for asking questions. Uh, with that said, I am pleased now to call on the ranking Republican member of our subcommittee, the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Hastert, for an opening statement. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for calling.